Hey, how you doing? This is Africans Arise. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Africans Arise, and also check out the Facebook page, which is Africans Arise Now. In this video, I'm going to talk about a very interesting idea, which uh, Walter Rodney discusses in his book, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. And this is basically the idea that in order for human societies to, to develop it, their productivity and to thus de to develop uh, their societies, they need to have a, a level of inequality. And those societies which are, which are egalitarian and communalistic thus have are at a disadvantage because they don't have you know they're not able to to match the productivity of the, uh, the 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 other societies so let's talk about this this is from Walter chapter two of Walter Rodney's book how Europe underdeveloped Africa so first of all when we talk about development Rodney gives a, a few po important uh, pointers here he, when he talks about the increasing capacity of societies to regulate their internal and external relationships. So, uh, when you're talking about uh, internal relationships, you're talking about ordering the society and you know organizing the society and so forth. That's a that's an aspect of development. Also, then survival against natural hazards and against uh, human enemies. That's an important thing. And the ability to guard the independence of the social group and if need be to infringe upon the freedom of other social groups. These are some of the, 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 the things we're talking about or what Rodney talks about when he's uh, discussing development. And I think these are important things because uh, when you look at this paragraph here, these aren't things that are sort of superficial or, or subjective or, or whatever, you know, all societies need to be able to do these things to, especially to, to survive you know, against natural hazards to survive against attacks and whatnot from other other groups. You need these things. These are not kind of, I've been, you know, people have said, oh, I'm Western thinking and so on. But I, I don't know, this just seems like a basic, a basic thing for societies to be able to do. Otherwise, you'll, you'll die off. There wouldn't be a society or a culture if you're not able to do these things. So in my opinion, these are some fairly basic aspects of development. Now, Walter Rodney was a Marxist, or he was very influenced by Marxist thought, and he employed uh, Marx's theory of, uh, of development, of human development, of, hu of history, mat uh, the materialistic, uh, historical materialism of Karl Marx, which basically looked at society and social development as being a byproduct of the economic development of societies. So he he broke human history down into several stages, which uh, you know f from the hunter gathering stage, then to the communalism stage, to the slavery stage, to the feudalism stage, to capitalism, and to socialism, communism. And in his understanding and in Marxist kind of thinking, each one of these stages of development involved a change in the way in which the society produced the things it needed for itself. In other words, that's that's another way of calling that is the mode of production, the manner in which the society produced for itself. Uh, Amilcar Cabral, the great leader of the Guinea-Bissau liberation struggle, had, a, I think, a better, a more simple way of looking at things. He basically broke it down into three stages, pre-class societies, class societies, and post-class societies. In pre-class society, there was rudimentary productivity, meaning very basic productivity, and little to no private property. In class societies, uh, there was progressively progressively more complex productivity, uh, and these class societies we're talking about the uh, the feudalism, uh, slavery, you could say in some areas of the world, capitalism uh, as well. Progressively more complex productivity, private appropriation of property, and class divisions divisions, which then led on to state formation. And then being a, being a Marxist as well, he had the idea there was going to be a post-class society uh, after capitalism. And this is all taken from his speech called The Weapon of Theory, uh, which was done in 1966, which I've got in a book called Unity and Struggles. Unity and Struggles, sorry, the speeches and writings of Amilcar. Now, it's important to point out that when these guys, your Cabral and Rodney, and uh, well, it's definitely Cabral, Cabral and Rodney, talk about the development, they're not making moral judgments. They're not saying that, uh, say, feudal society is better morally than 
the hunter-gathering societies or that capitalist society is morally better than communalism. No, that's not the point. And Rodney, in this quote here on page seven of his book, talks about how there's increased violence when you have the, the classes and the comp competition. So, yeah, it's not to say that they're morally better. However, again, each of these stages represented the increase in the ability of these societies to control their material environments, to create and provide for the, the members of the community and to protect and to, you know, to ensure the, the, the well-being of the people in that community. Uh, the, this is a good quote. Life became less hazardous and less uncertain and members of society potentially had greater choice over their destinies. This is what you, you know, um, Rodney sees when he's looking at the development of the human societies throughout the ages. Again, it's not a moral thing necessarily, but it's just a basic statement of societies being more able to provide for the people within their societies and uh, again, I, I don't see much controversy over that. Way you'll probably see a little bit controversy of controversy is the idea that communalism has a break on development, particularly economic development. And uh, Walter Rodney talks about how within communalism, because there was no, there was equal access to land, everyone had access to land, and uh, there was distribution of the resources was was egalitarian you know by by virtue of being a member of a family or community you had what you needed to meet your needs this was all good and this is great and I, you know you wouldn't say this is a bad thing but it did mean that there weren't really there wasn't much incentives for people to develop technology technological changes and to really you know invest into increasing productivity and surpluses and so forth because everybody had what they needed And he gives the example of agriculture. He talks about how the, the the level of agricultural development in Africa was lower than everywhere else. Pretty much, well, lower in lower than in Europe, definitely lower than than in Asia. Again, and he talks about how in you know in Europe, the there was a increasing professionalism, professionalization, and and even factor factorization of agricultural productivity because there was a group of people, i.e. the landed feudalists, the feudal landowners, who had the vested interest in increasing the productivity of the land. This wasn't seen in Africa, most parts of Africa because it was communalistic, egalitarian and communalistic, and thus there were no classes. So we've got the idea here that inequality is a driver of economic development. Now, for a lot of people, inequality is viewed as something intrinsically negative and intrinsically bad but actually i don't really think that's necessarily the case that's for, that's a topic for another video but i know that you know in in when we talk about politics and economics usually the idea of inequality is is like oh it's bad there's inequality there's wealth inequality there's income inequality and so forth but i i disagree with that i'll talk about that one day in a, in a video but uh, basically uh, this is the point. The, the, the point that Rodney is making is that where you had inequality, as reflected in the fact of you had social classes developing, some with you know elites and so forth, then you had more uh, more development of uh, productivity and uh, and technology. There were some areas of Africa that were feudal by the time the Europeans came along, so Egypt, Ethiopia, Nubia, and the Maghreb, so Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and so on. Those were feudal societies. In Ethiopia and Nubia's case, the churches were actually the, at the heart of the feudal systems. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about the Lalibela, the churches in Lalibela and all that kind of stuff, those were brought about, you know, that, that, that society building in, in that part of the world was as a result of the feudal societies that you know that had developed the feudal organization of society that had developed these feudal areas of africa were the most developed areas of africa the privileged groups uh, you know had developed uh, states in those areas because you can't have a state unless you have uh, stratification of society and certain privileged groups in order for them to, to want to control the rest and these privileged groups you know, developed the political structures and the great capacities that I've been talking about already. Uh, 
there were some areas of Africa that were lots of areas of Africa that are transitioning to, to feudalism. So there, there was sort of proto feudalism in places like Ghana, Mali, Songhai, and so forth. Some of these kingdoms we've we've all heard of, but the they haven't yet really kicked on into feudalism because they were still dominated by communalistic structures and they they weren't clear-cut social classes in those areas and in order for what, what Rodney says is that in order for them to, to have moved on to feudalistic organization there would have had to have been social upheaval and revolutions just as you've seen so many revolutions throughout European history um, brought about through a number of factors both environmental and uh, you know it as a result as a development of you know ideas and, and, and this kind of stuff but you didn't see this so much in African societies. There weren't the revolutions that came about, such as the English Revolution, the Glorious Revolution, the French Revolution, the Industrial Revolution. There's revolutions that bring a society from one mode of production, to use the Marxist language, into another mode of production. This hadn't happened within Africa. And Rodney ends, uh, gives a really good, uh, kind of overview of the differences between the most advanced areas of Africa and the most advanced areas of Europe around the 15th century, there wasn't that much to choose between them. And uh, this this is a point that's, that, that, you know, is important to make that, you know, it wasn't like Europe was way ahead of, you know, the, the most advanced areas of Africa, but there was difference enough because these, uh, these advanced European areas had definitely broken into feudalistic society and, you know, class society, they then had the groups within them who were motivated to develop the innovation, to innovate, to, to, to drive the increase in productivity and so forth. And this difference was key in then, once the, the, you know, the interactions had begun between Europe and Africa, once you had the slavery and particularly colonialism later on, they, you know, th that development in Europe continued apace and was fueled by slavery and was fueled by colonialism, meaning that the privileged groups within the Western societies were able to, you know, to really kick on and really specialize in the societies and really drive eventually industrial development and so forth. So I'll be interested to know what your thoughts are on this. Again, I'm not, these are, this isn't a moral thing. This is just talking about economic development and its relation to the social structures which existed within certain parts of the world. What, let me know your thoughts. What I'd like to do in a future video is maybe look at Sheikh Anta Diop's two cradle theory, which kind of tries to ask the question, why did Europe develop in the way that it did? In, you know, the class societies that it did and why Africa didn't develop those class societies. So maybe that's what I'll talk about in the next video. But uh, anyway, don't forget to subscribe to Africans Arise, like the Facebook page, Africans Arise Now, share the video, like the video if you like it, let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time.